don't eat We never cared that it came from a box The mom in the stands always clapping Her hands started cheering and still haven't stopped And you held me when I came home crying Cause someone said something that just wasn't true I always say that Janelle was my best friend But really, it's always been you I know that I haven't been easy I hope that I love like you do Cause I Show us your glory 
are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are here moving in our midst I worship you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every life, I worship you, I worship you, you are here. Mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, meeting every need, I worship you, I worship you. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you you're working even when I don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I worship you, I worship you.
worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. says, even though I don't feel it, you're working. And even though I don't see it, you're working. And so many of us are in that position right now where you may not feel God working. And you may not even see it, but we serve a God who is reaching through the dark, through the storm, coming after you. He's a faithful God. He has never failed you and he never will. So sing this with us. Through the storm, walking on the water, even when I could not see.
moment Will you forsake me? Not for a moment Will you forsake me? service and the offering. Father, we just come before you today, and we are so grateful that you are a way maker, that even when we don't see it, you are working. You are behind the scenes making all things work together for those who love you. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that he was willing to come to this earth and die on a cross for our sins. Father, we pray that you would bless the service today. Be with Pastor John as he preaches. Be with all the mothers out there as we celebrate Mother's Day. We pray that you would just convict hearts and that you would stir hearts and that people would turn their lives over to you today. Father, we give you all the glory and praise. We thank you for this offering. Use it to bring even more glory to your name. And we pray all these things in the powerful, holy, righteous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Happy Mother's Day to all of you moms out there. I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mom, who is down south today, Rhonda Wisner. Mom, I love you. I'm grateful for you, and I'm proud to be your son. Uh, happy Mother's Day. A special Happy Mother's Day also to my sister Marcy and her husband Kevin, as they welcomed their first child into this world this week, as you can see in this picture, little Peyton Faith Nattinger. So we are so excited for their family and just excited to be able to worship with your family today on such a special day as Mother's Day. To open up my message, I want to read to you something that is written by a man named Fred Cruz. And when it comes to the blessing and the heritage, the gift of mothers, he writes this, what is a mother. Somewhere between the youthful energy of a teenager and the golden years of a woman's life, there lives a marvelous and loving person known as mother. A mother is a curious mixture of patience, kindness, understanding, discipline, industriousness, purity, and love. A mother can be at one and the same time both lovelorn counselor to a heartsick daughter and head football coach to an athletic son. A mother can sew the tiniest stitch in the material for that dainty prom dress, and she is equally experienced in threading through the heaviest traffic with a station wagon. A mother is the only creature on earth who can cry when she's happy, laugh when she's heartbroken, and work when she's feeling ill. A mother is as gentle as a lamb and as strong as a giant. Only a mother can appear so weak and helpless, and yet be the same one who puts the fruit jar cover on so tightly even dad can't get it off. A mother is a picture of helplessness when dad is near and a marvel of resourcefulness when she's all alone. A mother has the angelic voice of a member in the celestial choir as she sings Brahms lullaby to a babe held tight in her arms. Yet this same voice can dwarf the sound of an amplifier when she calls her boys in for supper. A mother has the fascinating ability to be almost everywhere at once and she alone can somehow squeeze an enormous amount of living into an average day. A mother is old-fashioned to her teenager, just mom to her third grader, and simply mama to little two-year-old sister. But there is no greater thrill in life than to point to that wonderful moment and be able to say to all the world, that's my mother. Well, I want to speak to you today about a mother in Scripture that we don't talk about often in times like this. Her name is Hagar. And if I could entitle this message, it would be The Mom Who Is Noticed. The Mom Who Is Noticed. Let me give you a little background on this story. It's found in Genesis chapter 16, and you can turn there. At this point of the story, Abram is 85 years old, and he's been walking with God for 10 years. God has made a promise to Abram to give him a son, and later in history, through this son's bloodline, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, would be born. The challenge for Abram and Sarah was that God did not tell them exactly when this child would be born, and they were very old, and so they waited and they waited, and then Sarah got impatient. And the impatient decisions that we are about to read of have affected our world for almost 4,000 years in what is called the Arab-Israeli conflict. Born out of the division of two brothers, Ishmael and Isaac, and yet, even through the blunder of choosing not to wait on God, we find God's grace and forgiveness in this story and His love for a young, lost, confused Egyptian mother named Hagar. And we pick up the story in Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. It says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. And she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please, go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram heeded the voice of Sarah. Then Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land 
of Canaan. Let me just pray for you moms this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, just the wonderful gift of mothers. Lord, I am so thankful for the gift of my wife and the mother she is to our children. And I pray from Carrie to my mom, to my grandmother in South Carolina, to my mother-in-law, to Janet Thompson, to all of these women who are listening today who have given of themselves to be a mom. I pray that you would just uplift them and encourage them and strengthen their hearts. Lord, this is a tough time for a lot of moms. Uh, so many mothers are, are overwhelmed and experiencing new challenges as we go through this pandemic. And yet, Lord, you have ordained them for this time to be able to lead and help guide and raise their children in this time in history. And so I pray, Lord, I pray especially, Lord, for those single moms that are tuning in today. Maybe they're feeling alone and overwhelmed and just don't know what next week's going to look like, what tomorrow might look like. But I pray, Lord, that through the power of your word, Lord, that you would just anoint this time to strengthen their hearts. And as they wait upon the Lord, that you would help them to be of good courage. And Lord, you will see them through this time. You will see them through this season of being a mother. It can come so fast and seems like it stays so long. But then before we know it, uh, as I've talked to so many mothers, they said it comes and goes so quickly. So I pray, Lord, as they have this window of time to put their handprints on their children's hearts, that you would bless them in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want you to see the next picture that we see of Hagar. Is she is smiling. You could maybe even say that Hagar is strutting. Her whole life, all of a sudden, once she become, becomes Abram's second wife, and they're intimate together, and then she finds out eventually that she is pregnant, her world is turned upside down. And she's no longer just a slave. She is a wife to a very prestigious, honored Jewish man in their community. And look at verse 4, or verse 5. Um, no, I'm sorry, verse 4. It says, So Abram went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress, Sarah, became despised in her eyes. Then Sarah said to Abraham, Fam Family feud, it is on. A big family fight. Things got messy quick. And she goes into Abram and Sarah says, My wrong be upon you. She said, It's you're to blame. It's not my choice, it's your mistake. You're at fault, Abram. She said, I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised. Uh, that is the word for to be held in contempt, to be scorned, to be dishonored. And she said, I became despised in Hagar's eyes. And then she said, the Lord judge between you and me, Abram. This is a grave thing you have done. And so again, uh, there's a big brouhaha, this family all of a sudden. And uh, because they were rushing and when you push past God's timeline, it always creates chaos. But at first we see Hagar, and she's kind of strutting along and smiling. And maybe when Sarah comes in to the room, she's just singing a little tune like I have sung to my mother-in-law times. <laughs> and she's singing, uh, just maybe holding her belly a little bit and saying, do 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 little do do little do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, don't give me a hard time. Uh, anyway, maybe, maybe or, or maybe she's singing this. Again, patting her belly, walking past Sarah. We are the champions, <laughs> my friend. And we'll keep on fighting till the end. Bum, 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 bum. We are the champions. We are the... T well, I don't know. I don't know if that song was back then. But anyway, Hagar, does, she kind of has a, a smug, proud, little bit of an arrogant attitude here towards Sarah. And it is driving Sarah up the wall. And she is angry. And she goes in and sets Abraham straight. 
The next picture we see of Hagar is a little bit different. And I would just remind all of you, whether you're a mom or a dad or a teen or a grandparent, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18 says this, Pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And Hagar, next we see that she is struggling and she is suffering. Uh, she's going through sorrow. And look in verse 6. It says, So Abraham said to Sarah, Indeed, uh, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. So he just kind of becomes passive and he says, I'm not getting in the middle of this. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, cruelly, that's the word, with her, Hagar fled from her presence. And so Sarah goes up, finally she's had enough, and maybe she corners Hagar in the tent while Abram's gone, and she says, look here, little, look here, little maid girl. Look here, you will always be second fiddle to me. I am your mistress. I am your boss. Abram might be your master, but he's going to do what I tell him to do with you. You will always be second place. The best you'll ever be is just a surrogate mother of my child. You'll always be a slave. You'll always be my servant. And she just runs her down and puts her down and degrades her until this young slave girl, this co-wife, <laughs> with his sister wife with Sarah has had enough and she's broken and she's confused and we see her fleeing and running away and the next picture we see of Hagar is that she is sought she is seen and noticed and then we see that she is saved look at verse 7 it says now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then Hagar called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also seen also here seen him who sees me. Therefore the well was called Be'er Haroi. Observe it, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And so this young girl, the most devastating, broken time of her life, is found, is sought out, and is found, and is noticed by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I talked to you last week about a preacher named John Phillips. We watched a video clip of him together. And I want to read to you his commentary on this portion of Scripture. And he says, It is the first time in Scripture that reference is made to the angel of the Lord. It is remarkable to say the least that the first occur occur occurrence pardon me, <laughs> of the Jehovah angel, probably none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself, in one of his pre-incarnate angelic appearances, it is called a Christophany, should be not to Abraham, but to Hagar. Not to the heir of all the promises, but to an Egyptian fugitive. Not to a man, but to a woman. Not to a saint, but to a sinner. Not to a person of high rank, but to a slave. Not to one seeking God, but to one fleeing back towards Egypt. The friend of the friendless, the loving second person of the Godhead, met that forlorn woman beside a fountain, as centuries later, clothed in living human flesh, he met another woman at a wayside well in John 4. It was a revelation of the grace of God. He loved Hagar just as much as he loved Abram. He sought her and found her on the frontiers of Egypt as he had sought and found Abram in far off Ur. And moms, maybe that's how you feel a little bit today. 
during this pandemic, during this Mother's Day, you're feeling overwhelmed and discouraged. You're feeling confused and broken because you already felt like you were at max capacity. You already felt like the responsibility you had was, was right at the peak of what you could handle. And now not only are you a mom, and not only are you uh, a, a mother who's helping feed and lead and guide your kids, but now you, many of you or most of you have become school teachers. And so just like my wife has, and we have little desks set up in our home, and that has changed Carrie's whole schedule. It's changed her whole uh, routine for the day. And she has been uh, a true champion, and I'm so grateful for her. But, but for many of you, especially you single moms, it's just it's become such a, uh, a change in your life. And maybe you feel like, Hagar, you feel like just running, just, just going out and getting away from it all and just say, I can't do it anymore. I give up. One of the ladies' moms in our church, she said, I think at around 5 o'clock when her husband gets home, uh, she says it is a rule in their house that her, mom, her name is no longer mom. And she just uses some random name. And she says, I'm, don't, don't, don't call me that anymore. Of course, she's teasing. But it is. It gets overwhelming. And I, the, the load on mothers. But I want to remind you that, that God noticed this poor young mother-to-be in her most desperate hours. A few years ago when Reagan was maybe uh, six or seven, she was attending school up here in a little learning to read class. And I walk in, and I'm, I'm pretty focused on what I needed to do. I need to talk to her teacher and going over some school stuff and some church items. And, and so I go in there, and we, we talk for a moment, and I turn around, and I begin to hurry out. And I hear a little voice say, Daddy? And I just froze in my tracks, and I could just feel my heart sink. And I turn around, and my, first, uh, my firstborn daughter is looking at me, blinking her eyes kind of like she's confused and she's going daddy daddy did you not did you not see me sitting here <laughs> and I felt so bad and I went over and I said oh Reagan I said I see you and I I talked to her a little bit about what she's learning to read and I tried to encourage her and affirm her and and lift her up uh, but I said yeah I see you and I'm proud of you and I know you're doing a great job well, many of you felt like that at times in your relationship with the Lord. David had those moments where he said, God, God, you, have you forsaken me? Have you forgot about me? And moms, I just want to remind you again that the scripture uh, says here that God, did, he, he was seeking after Hagar and he saw Hagar. He noticed her. And I want to remind you today, moms, that God notices you and he loves you and he cares about you. And just like he made promises to Hagar that he was going to meet all of her needs, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, God says this, I will supply all of your need according to my riches in glory. And so God's going to see you through this time, moms. I was thinking about Carrie uh, for the past couple of days, thinking about what I could write to her in her Mother's Day card. And as I was studying this scripture, I thought, little word of encouragement, admonition to you dads, to you kids out there on this day, is just make sure that you let your wife know, that you let your mom know that you see and that you notice uh, what she does for you and for your family. I wrote this to Carrie. I notice the prayers you pray for little ears to hear. I notice the scriptures you read to help mold tiny hearts. I notice the tears you wipe away and the cuts you soothe. I notice the meals you fix and the dishes you clean. I see the endless piles of laundry you wash, the pairs of socks you match up, fold, and put away. I see the shirts you iron, the carpets you vacuum, and all the floors you swiffer. I notice the hugs you give, the affirmations you share, and the smiles you endlessly gift to our children. I am aware of the thousands of steps you travel and the many miles you drive each week to transport and keep life interesting for the kids. I see the cookies you bake and the crafts you help make. I notice the sacrifices of your time and the unending, ceaseless love you give to our kids day after day after day. I see and I marvel at the amount of energy you exert, and after little sleep, you start all over the next morning without complaint or self-pity 
but with grace, joy, and contentment of the role that God has placed upon you as a mother. I am aware that not only are you an amazing mother, but you have become an incredible school teacher. And I thank God, I thank God that you, Carrie, are good at math. She's a valedictorian at uh, Northridge High School many years ago. Very grateful for that. Carrie, when it seems like the world is one big dumpster fire right now, I notice the songs of God's strength that you're continually humming in the kitchen. I see the dancing you do in the yard to giggles and shrieks of elated voices and the strength and comfort and peace you help provide for our children when you could close your bedroom door and cower in fear or run away. Abraham Lincoln said, No one is poor who had a godly mom. And although our children notice and they see and they are aware, they don't realize just how rich they are. So today I want you to know you are seen, you are noticed, and our family rises up and we call you blessed. And husbands and fathers and sons and daughters, make sure that you notice all that the mom in your house does for you. We have much to be grateful for. And moms, I just want you to know that you are our heroes. And God is looking down upon you today and saying, I love you, I will never forsake you, and he's going to supply everything you need. There was a young boy at a um, little church gathering where they were having a, a Sunday school presentation. So he's standing up there on the stage with his other classmates and his Sunday school from his Sunday school class and as he's getting ready to say his line, he forgets it, and he goes blank. Well, his mom is sitting down there on the front row, and she gestured to him with her lips what the line was. And uh, she was, well, her, his mind was blank, and he just, he, he couldn't. So, so finally she leaned forward, and she, she whispered to him, I am the light of the world. And the young boy beamed, and with great feeling and a loud, clear voice, he straightened and stood tall, and he said, My mother is the light of the world. And moms, we can echo that today. Uh, you shine bright. You are our heroes, and we notice you, and God is seeking you out, and he sees you, and he is your salvation. And then I want to just close by showing you, lastly, Hagar submitting. Uh, look at verses 15 and 16 in the story. It says, So Hagar bore Abram a son. Hagar went back home. And Abram named his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. What a great picture of surrender and submission. We talked quite a bit about that last Sunday. I'll remind you of the definition and the difference between those words. Surrender means to yield to the possession or power of another, to give oneself up as to the police. Submission is defined this way, to give over or yield to the power or authority of another, to allow oneself to be subjected to some kind of treatment or influence. So we see early in the story of Genesis 16 that Hagar did surrender to Abram and Sarah and went along with their plan, and she became Abram's second wife, and uh, then she found out that she was pregnant. So she surrendered to what they wanted her to do. But then all of a sudden, when she found out she was carrying that child, she fled. She said, I'm not, I'm not taking this. I'm not dealing with this issue. I'm not going to get in the midst of this family feud. I'm running, fleeing. I'm going to do my own thing. And yet when she was out there in the desert, what did God say to her when he found her? He said, Hagar, here's what you need to do. You need to wipe away your tears. You need to allow me to minister grace and strength to your heart. And then he said this, you need to go back and submit yourself to Sarah. That was a hard thing to do. That was a tough thing to do. 
And yet, as you close out this portion of the story, the Bible says that Hagar bore Abraham a son. She went back home, and she submitted herself to her master. And she said, I am going to be faithful to do what you've asked me to do. And moms, as we go through this difficult time in our nation, I want to just encourage you, keep submitting to the leadership and the lordship of God in your life. Your, your influence, your treatment that you put upon your children and your children's lives and upon their hearts and their minds, is it's going to last for eternity. The influence and the treatment of my mom. I have a mom who is per- near perfect. <laughs> I'm scoring some brownie points. Trust me, there's a long history here of this. No, but uh, I am just reminded when I go and visit my mom, all she wants to do is just serve me and try to love on me and try to encourage me every time I see her. Um, and I'm so grateful for a godly mother. And I want to remind you moms that God sees and he notices. And mom, I notice all the years, almost 40 years of a faithful mom, and I'm very, very grateful. And I know that at times I have, a lot of times over the years, I have failed to recognize all that you have done for me and for Danny and Lindsay and Marcy. But, um, you know, as you have children of your own and you see all that, I see all that Carrie does, it's just a great reminder of how blessed I am uh, with a godly mother, a godly mother-in-law, godly grandmothers. Uh, again, I've already mentioned Janet Thompson, who I've always called a second mom, but she's had her influence in my life, still does, and then just so, so grateful. But I want to remind you moms, keep submitting yourselves. Keep submitting yourselves to the Lordship of Christ. You are priceless. <laughs> Nobody can replace your influence on our children's lives. And so we love you, we're proud of you, but just keep in mind, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it says this, Humble yourselves, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And the reason that Hagar was able to find the strength, to find the strength to stand up in that Lonely, dark, cold, desert floor, barrenness in her life. And say, I'm going back to what God is calling me to. Is because when she was knelt down there in the sand. And her tears were forming puddles. As she was bent over with that load on her. She let go of it. She let go. And released it to the Lord. And when she submitted herself to God's authority. It enabled her to have the strength to stand back up and go back there and surrender and submit herself to Abram and Sarah and be able to fulfill God's plan for her life and for this world. If you go and want to read more, there's more in Genesis chapter 26 or 21 about the story. And and the story gets even more sad and complicated. And yet, and, and once again, Hagar finds herself separated from Abram and she's with her son and they're feeling lost and hopeless and like their lives are over and yet once again God comes on the scene in that desert and he meets with them again and he says, Hagar, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to supply your needs. And moms, God notices you. He sees you. Keep surrendering yourself to his lordship and he's going to get you through this time. We love you. We are proud of you. We are grateful for you. My heart is filled with gratitude uh, for the gift of mothers. And so moms, you are seen. You are sought after. And your salvation is found in God. And as we close, maybe you're a mom watching today. You know, you say, you, you say, John, as you talk about this thing of being saved and knowing the Lord, I don't know the Lord. I've never trusted in Christ and believed on him to be my savior and today moms you can do that right there sitting in your home or maybe you're watching on your phone in your car Uh, I want to just tell you that God loves you and his plan for you as a mother 
is to influence and lead your children to follow after Christ. But if you haven't done that, you can do that now. Would you just be willing to bow your heads and pray with me and just pray this simple prayer. Dear God, I need you to save me. I believe that your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And God, I repent of my sins and I cast all my cares and all my burdens upon you because I know you care for me. I repent and I turn to you to be my Savior and my Lord. And God, as a mom, I want to trust in you and lean upon you and believe on you so that not just for my own life but for my children's sake that I can begin to teach them and train them what it looks like to decide to follow Jesus and have a life that hungers and thirsts after the things of God and to make an impact for this world. So God, thank you for coming into my life and for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We love you moms. Happy Mother's Day. You are noticed, you are loved, and you are appreciated. Here's your clothes and your shoes. Here are the words I said. Get up now. Get up and make your bed. Are you hot? Are you cold? Are you wearing that? Where's your books and your lunch and your homework at? Grab your coat and your gloves and your scarf and hat. Don't forget, you gotta feed the cat. Eat your breakfast. The experts tell us it's the most important meal of all. Take your vitamins so you will grow up one day to be big and tough. There's a room for the orthodontist. We'll be seeing you at three today. Don't forget, your piano lesson is this afternoon. So you must play. Don't shovel. Choose slowly, but hurry. The bus is here. Be careful. Come back here. Did you wash behind your ears? Play outside, don't leave rope. Would you just play fair? Be polite, make a friend. Don't forget to share. Work it out, wait your turn. Never take a dare. Get along. Don't make me come down there. Clean your room, fold your clothes, put your stuff away. Make your bed, do it now. Do we have all day? Were you born in a barn? Would you like some hay? Can you even hear a word I say? Answer the phone, get off the phone. Don't sit so close, turn it down. No texting at the table. No more computer time tonight. Your iPod's my iPod if you don't listen up. Where you going and with whom? Time do you think you're coming home? Say thank you, please excuse me, makes you welcome everywhere you run. You'll appreciate my wisdom someday when you're older and you're grown. Can't wait till you have a couple little children of your own. You'll thank me for the counsel I gave you so willingly. But right now, I thank you not to roll your eyes at me. Close your mouth when you chew. We'd appreciate. Take a bite, maybe two of the stuff you hate. Use your fork, do not burp, or I'll set you straight. Eat the food I put up on your plate. Get an egg in the door. Don't get smart with me. Get a grip, get in here. I'll count two, three. Get a job, get a life, get a PhD, get a ghost. I don't care if you started. You're grounded until you're 36. Get your story straight and tell the truth for once, for heaven's sake.